Hey everybody, Timimix here and today I want to show you how to export HDR for YouTube after the intro. I'm often asked if YouTube can handle HDR files and how to export footage as HDR file that works on YouTube. Therefore I want to show you today how to export footage as HDR for YouTube, of course in DaVinci Resolve. I won't explain any details or backgrounds, I'm only showing you how to export your footage. If you will watch this HDR clip afterwards on YouTube, your smart TV will show you this clip in HDR if your TV can do HDR, like an OLED TV for example. Important side note, on most computers you can't watch this file locally. And please keep in mind that HDR is totally different than SDR. This starts with light setups for your scenes and it ends with differences in color grading, especially in color space, gamma and bit depth, to name just a few. Additionally, it's important to know that you should use at least 10-bit and log footage. In other words, footage with a dynamic range with at least 13 stops, otherwise your result can look terrible. That's only a rough guideline. Furthermore, you should know that this tutorial is especially for YouTube HDR. HDR for TV or streaming works different and it's not a complete workflow or something like this. I only show you with the settings. So all that's not the topic of this video. In general, you can export any footage as HDR if you really want. But if you are interested in more details or how to color grading in HDR and what's important and how it works in detail, please let me know in the comments or write me an email. Okay, this is a simple clip, not especially graded for HDR, just color and exposure corrected and a slight touch of color grading just to get a good result for demonstration purpose. The first step is to open the project settings and switch in the master settings in the video monitoring section from video to full data levels. Change the video bit depth to 10 bit. Then go to color management and change the color signs to DaVinci YRGB color managed. Check the use separate color space and gamma and choose the right input color space for your footage. If you don't know which color space your footage has, you can bypass this option. In timeline color space, switch the color space to Rec 2020 and the gamma to ST2084 1000 nit. Do the same for the output color space and be sure to limit the output gamma to the output color space. Now the timeline to output tone mapping to luminance mapping and the max timeline luminance to 1000 nits. Then set the timeline to output gamut mapping to saturation mapping. If you use an HDR monitor for your color grading, you can check the checkbox display HDR on viewers if available. Otherwise, leave this untouched. Check the HDR mastering is for 1000 nits. Then go down to the HDR 10 plus section and check enable HDR 10 plus. That's how you should set your project settings for color grading in HDR in general. There are more options and some things to be aware of, but with this simple setup, you will be able to export your footage as working HDR file for YouTube. Okay, let's close this for now. If you now color grade your footage as usual, you will get much too oversaturated export results, totally looking different than in your viewer in the Dimension Resolve. Why? If you don't have an HDR monitor for your color grading, you will not be able to see what you are doing. In other words, you are going to be doing your color grading totally blind. That's the reason why color grading without an HDR reference monitor is almost not possible, at least not if you want to do it reasonably or even professionally. But there's a little trick which can help you to get a bit of control of what you are doing. Let's open the project settings again and let's jump to the color management. Here we will use the technical LUT which will work in most cases. With this LUT you will be able to simulate how the result will look like approximately. 
You can think of this like a match from your SDR to HDR. That's technically spoken absolutely wrong, but this explains best what it does. So it's just a very, very simple explanation of this workflow or better to help you to get a better understanding what we are doing and why we are doing that. Okay, let's go down to the lookup table section. And what we are going to do now is make DaVinci Resolve help us to showing us how the result will look like approximately. Go to the 3D video monitor lookup table row and choose the ARRI log C to REC 709 LUT and then hit save. In general, we could jump to the deliver page, but I highly recommend to switch all your nodes to HDR mode. If you skip this step, you will get different results. That's the short explanation and that's what you should keep in mind. If I create another version and then switch all my nodes back to SDR mode, you will recognize that the image looks different now. If I now switch back and forth between these two versions, you can see what I mean. And as I mentioned before, this is not a tutorial how to do a correct color grading in HDR. That's a totally other story. But with this technique, you can export your color grading to HDR for YouTube and that's it. Okay, time to jump to the deliver page. As format, choose QuickTime. Then choose DNxHR as codec and as type, choose DNxHR 44410-bit or 12-bit, this depends on your footage. If your footage has 12 or more bit depth, you should use 12-bit, otherwise 10-bit will do. But keep in mind that the 10-bit is the minimum for the HDR. Then be sure to check the checkbox embed HDR 10 metadata. Furthermore, be sure the checkbox use constant bitrate is checked too. On the advanced settings switch, the data levels from auto to full and finally activate the checkboxes force sizing to highest quality and force debayer to highest quality. Choose your location and type in your file name, add the settings to your render queue and hit render. If you now check your file on a Mac, for example, just by selecting the file on the finder, you can see that we rendered out a BT2020 HDR file on Windows. This should work in your file explorer too. And now we are done. If you upload this file to YouTube, you can watch this as a true HDR content on a HDR TV, for example. That means your TV will recognize this content as a true HDR content and will show you this correctly. I hope I could help you a bit. And if you want to know more about HDR and color grading in HDR, let me know. Okay, that's it. Please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for watching and listening. You all a great time and stay healthy. Bye.